Talk to your neighbor, say neighbor. neighbor. Listen, to your Listen to your conscience. Say it again, say neighbor. neighbor. Listen to your conscience. That is the title of our message. Remember, I shared with you this message on Wednesday. And I want to continue where I left. Let me start with the scripture that I quoted. From there, we go to Romans chapter 2. But before we go there, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. I'll just read this for you and say one or two things. Then I'll take you to Romans chapter Okay, let me first read this one. These are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. 11. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. You can lead and lead and go down, but I want to just to introduce this message to you, those who are not there on Wednesday. You must listen to your conscience. No one knows you apart from you yourself. You know what you are doing, you know what you are saying about people. You know the way you are deceiving people that you love them, you stand with them, and yet you are not. Remember that brother, you are eating his money. You are enjoying everything from him, and yet your mind is somewhere. Your conscience is always telling you that, look, what you are doing is wrong. But you want to pretend that what you are doing is right. But inside your heart, you know that you are just pretending. Your mind is somewhere. Listen to your conscious people of God. In that office where you are, as a teacher, as an accountant, a manager, a police officer, and a lawyer, you know that it is not everything that you are doing that are giving you peace. Your conscience is always telling you that, look, what you are doing is not good. But because no one knows what you are doing, you continue pretending that what you are doing is good. But inside yourself, the Bible says that no one, a person thought, except their spirit within themselves. That is your conscience. That is your what? Your conscience. Your conscience is your witness. Your conscience can testify for good, for good or bad. It doesn't matter whichever side. If it is good, your conscience will say, yeah, this is good. If it is bad, your conscience will still tell you that this is bad. But for how long are you going to ignore your conscience? No one can tell you the truth apart from your conscience. No one can confront you that what you are doing is wrong. Although no one knows or sees you doing this, it is only your conscience that can remind you about your activities. And if you cannot listen to your conscience, I feel for you. Listen to, tell your neighbor, listen to your conscience. Say it again, listen to your conscience. Let's go to Romans now. Chapter 2, verse 13. For it is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law who be declared righteous. 14. Indeed, when Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature things that required by law. They are a law for themselves. I want to pause here so that you understand this point. 14. When the Gentiles who do not have the law do by, by nature the things required by law, 
They don't have the law, but they have done the things required by law. The Bible says they become a law for themselves. What does it mean? You can confess Jesus in the flesh. That is natural. Let me read so that you understand this point. I don't want you to be left behind. Let's go to 14. Indeed, when the Gentiles who do not have the law, you remember the law before now? We are talking about the Ten Commandments. Today we are talking about the Holy Spirit in us because we believe in Christ. Praise the Lord. Who do not have the law? Because by then, according to the, you know, the law, you cannot worship God without observing what? The law. This is why they were Jews and the Gentiles who were not part of the law. But look at this. You do not have the law, but because you fear the authority in their presence, you are behaving as if it's you are carrying the law. But after everything, you go back to the life that you know. Meaning, you can preach the word of God in the flesh without the Holy Spirit. You can quote scriptures. There are people who can quote scripture and teach you. But they have no power to use the same scripture they are, they are, they are teaching you about. Listen to 14. This message is very, very important to you and me. Indeed, when the Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature, take note of by nature, that is natural, without the Holy Spirit in the flesh. Do you need the Holy Spirit for you to read the Bible physically? No, you can read it. You have been to school. You understand the English. You can read if it is Bemba, you lead. Everyone who hear you leading Bemba. It doesn't mean that the word you are reading is part of you. No. You are just, you know, sharing that message as a human being. I mean, the history of the Bible in the natural law. Are you there? If, when the Gentiles who do not have the law, do by nature things required by law. They are a law for themselves. Even though they do not have the law. They become the law. Because they are behaving like, like for example, a criminal can pray more than a child of God in terms of minutes or hours to deceive the people. A natural man who start the Bible or master the scriptures can quote Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And people will be like, ah, these are proper teachings. And yet, it is natural. The Spirit of God is not there. And his conscience is telling that what you are teaching these people, our wish, you too, you can listen to what you are teaching them. You can be saved. That is inside that person. People can preach the word of God according to their, their knowledge. The best knowledge that you acquire from school, you can use it to interpret English, but not to share the grace of God. Natural people, they always use their mind to examine the things of God, which is wrong. It is the Spirit of God that can examine the things of God. This is why the Bible says that no one knows the mind of God except the Spirit of God within himself. If you are teaching people the Bible without the Holy Spirit, you are misreading them. And you are misreading yourself. And the Spirit of God is telling you that what you are teaching them, you need the same way that you are teaching them. But because you are pretending, it is only your conscience that can make you to know that, oh, what I'm doing is wrong. But if you cannot listen to your conscience, you never change. There are people, you are inside the church. Every Sunday you go to church. After Sunday service, you go and drink beer. Your conscience will keep on telling that, why? You are from church, but why are you drinking beer? Why are you doing this? Um, let's go to 15. They show that 
the requirements of the law are written on their hearts. They are conscious, also bearing witness. Take note of that. They show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts. They are conscious, also bearing witness. And their thoughts sometimes accuses them. And at the other times, even defending them. Are you there? They show. Show to who? To the people. They show to the people that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts. And they are conscious, also bearing witness. So the best witness for any human being is your conscience. Sometimes when I look at people, you are asking this person, but why this, I know, you know, they will lie. A child of God who is claiming to know God more, who wants to follow Jesus more, will not tell you the truth. But the conscious inside that person will tell that, why are you lying? Why can't you say the truth? If you keep on, you know, living that life, you'll never be free. You'll never be what? Free. Let, let me take you uh, to the book of uh, Titus. I want you to understand these people of God. God is not a man like you and me. God is spirit. It is human beings that you can deceive through your dress code. It is human beings that you can deceive with you know, your religious language. You cannot deceive God. This is why your conscience must be always your best friend. Do you know the reason why you need to make your conscience your best friend? It is only your conscience that can tell you the truth. Your fellow human being may not even say that this is wrong. Even those who are in politics. Have you ever seen anyone or any minister to confront the president or the peers confront the, the minister? No, you cannot. But inside you, you know what you are saying about your president. You know what you are doing about your minister. Your conscience is always telling that, look, this man is a president. You are eating, you are driving. Look at where you are. Why are you doing this behind his back? That is your conscience as a politician. Your conscience is, the, it doesn't matter. Oh, you are not hearing me. Conscious taisa la to rindo. Nang feni kabwa la la kumwe bat iwe one day ichi polo polo chika kupita mumu tesi ulechita. Na ba kashite tuwa mwe bat tuwa shumwa ne fi mwe ba ba kamilas ah bali tina. Conscious doesn't fear. As I'm standing here, there are people who are deceiving our leaders. Behind their back, they are the ones who are destroying them. But they are conscious telling them that. You are destroying this man. You are betraying this man. Why are you doing this to this man? Listen to your conscience. Listen to your conscience. It's the only way you can change if you can pay attention to what your conscience is telling you. You are a married man, you are a married woman, you have a man, you have a woman. Your conscience is telling you, why are you doing this to your wife? Why are you doing this to your husband? No one can tell you. Some of you, you, are, you have friends. You even go together to see uh, your man outside your marriage, to see a woman outside your marriage. Your friend will, will, will follow you there. They will be there waiting for you. Drinking, whatever they are drinking, you are inside the room in that hotel. Your friends are there. They cannot tell that, ah, boy, but if you like that, they cannot, only your conscience will follow you in that room. Whatever you'll be doing in that room, your conscience will remind you when you finish that, look, what you are doing is not good. Can you stop this? Are you there? Listen to your conscience. Tell your neighbor, listen 
to your conscience. Say it again. Your conscience is always reminding you about the life that you are living. The people that you are betraying, the people that you are destroying, you are getting money. Future, future is what you, you, need, you, know, you need to secure. Your conscience is telling you about your future. Why are you creating, you know, all these things? Look at your future. See your future. Can you change from this so that you secure your future? Your conscience is your best friend. Do you know the reason why you need to listen to your conscience? There's no place where you can go and you, your conscience remains behind you. No, because it's inside you. It's inside you. Everything that you are doing, your conscience is there. Kambone wachishinka. Ni uriaka mpingue nuwa bamuisa. Mukati uriya mulanda mwati. Ababe naka mpingue wabo temutu ntulu. Listen to your conscience. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Titus because of time. Chapter 1. We start from verse 15. To the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are corrupted and do not believe on anything pure, in fact, both their minds and conscience are corrupted. They claim to know God, but by their actions, they deny him. They are detestable, disobedient, and fit of doing anything good. I'll go step by step for this one. I want you to know that God knows your heart. He knows your inside more than your outside. His interest is not your outside, but your inside. Listen to 15. To the pure, all things are what? Simply means they know what they are doing. Anything that you are doing because you are pure, you will not do things that are evil. Everything will be what? Pure. That is what the Bible says here. But to those who are corrupted and do not believe, nothing is pure. Nothing is what? In fact, both their minds and conscience are corrupted. Even if your conscience is corrupted, he will keep on reminding you about the things that you are doing. The Bible says that they are detestable, disobedient, and fit to do anything good. The point I want you to take here again, you claim to know God, but your action deny him. Listen to your conscious people of God. Don't say with your mouth that I'm a child of God. Your inside is saying, you know, something different to what you are saying. Don't say, I love you. Nkabana imwe, nshaka mishe, konsoko mukaya, nakulabana imwe. Your inside is telling you that no, you will not be with this woman or this man. You will not be with this one. You are already gone somewhere. You marry somewhere, but your mouth is saying, I am here with you. Only they are conscious. Listen to your conscience. Conscious who rebuke you. Conscious can rebuke anyone, even the president. Conscious can talk to anyone. 
Mr. Minister, Mr. President, Mr. Director, Mr. IG, what you are doing is wrong. No one knows but your conscience who keep on telling you this. This is why whatever you are doing to them, remember that there is another life after this life. And your conscience is more concerned about that life, not this one. Are you learning that office with a clean hand? Are you treating people with love? Are you telling your boss the truth? Are you not stealing from your boss? Are you not making, you know, Amadilu in Samushi behind your boss's back? Your conscience is telling you that, look, <laughs> these things that you are doing, why? Look at you. Why are you doing this? Why can't you stop this? No one can tell you that. Only your conscience. I'm telling you. Even politicians, when they are lying, when they are insulting, fighting, planning evil things against each other, they are conscious. When you are sleeping and you wake up zero two, your conscious will, because you are a from a moment where your conscious will tell you to say, Why are you planning this? Why can't you stop? Because you want to show people, you want to please people, you not stop until you go to hell. Listen to your conscience. If you listen to your conscience, your life is secured. Listen to your conscience. It is only your conscience that can collect you within yourself. No one knows what you did yesterday. No one knows where you, are, where you came from this morning. You are drinking beer. You are humanizing. Your conscience is telling you that. But why are you? You are a good person. Look, woman, look, man. Stop this. Why is it so difficult for you to stop that? That is the nature of the flesh. That is what? When your inside is corrupted, there's nothing pure. When your inside is what? The spirit of God is not there. You cannot listen to your conscience. Because your spirit is completely corrupted. What is wrong, it is good to you. The bad things, you enjoy them. You cannot enjoy the good life. Listen to your conscience. Say it again. Talk to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, this is my free advice. You are not paying me anything. Listen to your conscience. Uh -huh. I hope your conscience is listening to you. <laughs> I mean, I hope you are listening to your conscience. Uh -huh. Your conscience is telling you stop smoking, stop masturbating, stop in Juka. Ngabaku yati naleka. Ngawaku ata. You are you are a corrupt person. Immediately if you are quite a child, and I'm born in Juka, mpum. Ah, now I'm putting Juka, you're conscious at Wal and that Waleka. Teach the Tuleka the face. The Peruinga could stack a reminder to Adila and Defi. If you're Mala Alessa, Bons of your Pomuke, if you're Mawa de la Kokunuma, conscious camping, we are never put if you are and that night, Sashani, Naleka. But you look at you. You will die with anger. That is your conscience. It doesn't respect anyone. And you cannot fight conscience. You cannot even see it. It's inside you. Hmm? You are listening to your conscience. Your conscience is the one telling you that. Oh, thank you. God bless you. <laughs>